guys, it's Rosie, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a big review from a fan of the entire Loki series and I'm super excited because this series was just super exciting and it was so different from anything Marvel has ever done before and I love that they brought Loki back. Um, he's been one of my favorite characters for several years. I just want to preface this by saying if you haven't watched the complete season, do not watch this video. I'm going to spoil the entire thing down to like very small details just that I have comments on. So I have my notes here. I took major notes on every episode. So there's this page and then there's this. So I'm going to be reading from this and kind of just talking about what I think. So let's get into episode one. So like I said, do not watch unless you've seen the entire series because this is going to spoil it for you. Um, also, check out my Loki shirt. I got it at Hot Topic right before the show came out. Um, so Loki has been one of my favorite characters ever since like the first Avengers movie. Um, I've been watching Marvel for so long and I just... <laughs> he was just such a mood, especially back then. So of course he's changed a lot, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But yeah, I don't really know why young me thought Loki was a great character. <laughs> he definitely is not the nicest person especially in the first Avengers movie but <laughs> whatever um, also it is very hot in here because I have my ring light and I have my LEDs going and also it's like 90 out so if my face is red that is why I'm also sitting on a fuzzy blanket so I'm pretty warm so I've watched this series like five or more times through and I'm not mad about it. Um, it started coming out like a month and a half ago, I think. Um, a little more than that, actually. I went on a road trip and I just kept watching it over and over again, even as the episodes were still coming out. And then I watched it with my best friend and then I watched it with my parents. So it has been many times, so I feel like I'm qualified to comment on this. Um, it's so different and new for Marvel, and I think it's an awesome way to kick off Phase 4. So, let's start off with Episode 1. So, I love how it directly ties into Avengers and Endgame, um, and it's helpful to watch Avengers before you start watching Loki to get an idea of, like, where he is in his life. That's what I did with my parents um, when I was watching it with my best friend. Well, I guess before I started watching it, before it came out, I watched Endgame because I thought that was like the logical progression of time because that is when Loki disappears with the Tesseract, but I think Avengers leads into it better um, because they do a recap of Endgame at the beginning of Loki, so if you haven't seen Endgame recently, it kind of catches you up on that anyway. It would be helpful to watch Endgame as well, but I think Avengers sets you up a little bit better. Um, that being said, Loki is already very different than he was in the, like, whole Avengers movie, uh, which makes sense because it was, like, almost 10 years later that they filmed it, um, but you can really tell differences between how Tom Hiddleston played the character, um, even just, like, from the two movies that were supposed to, like, well, from the series and the movie that were supposed to line up. Um, so we see so much character development just in this episode, especially when Loki's watching his file with Mobius. Um, and like at the end of file, it's so sad when it shows the end of the reel and Loki's like, that's, that's my life. Cause he has already lived like pretty far up to that. So, uh, the TVA is kind of depressing in this episode because of how like powerless and stuck Loki feels, especially when he's figuring out that this is the greatest power in the universe. Um, it does make me sad also that they got rid of Loki's fine Asgardian leather. Just his whole costume is like, it's very on point, so I'm sad they got rid of it for just like the boring TVA clothes. Um, we learn about the variant at the end of the episode, and the TVA shows like a bit of weakness when the variant captures agents, so at least the TVA isn't like a completely, you know, powerful organization that is just like dominating everything. Um, the variant is able to best them in some ways, so I at least like that they do show a little bit of vulnerability. Um, also, seeing how the Infinity Stones and the Tesseract are, like, completely useless and how there are so many of them, that gives, like, such a stifling feeling. You're like, 
wow, what have I been working up to? Like, the Avengers were fighting over nothing, um, fighting like Thanos and all that. Just the fact that so many other people have successfully gotten Infinity Stones and then just to have them taken by the TVA, that's just kind of crazy. So that was really big for Marvel. So episode two, um, this is one of my favorite episodes because it's like super happy and funny. It gives me just a good feeling. I love Mobius and Loki's dynamic and I wish they would have had more screen time together in other episodes. They don't really interact as much except in episode four, I guess, when Mobius is really mad at Loki for betraying him. So the style of the TVA is so perfect for what it is. They did a really good job like designing it and everything fits together so well. And I'd love to visit the hotel that the part where they were like going through files was filmed at because that looks like a really cool place and I've seen people visiting it and I just love visiting sets. I think it's really cool to see like where movies were filmed. So it's nice how like Loki is the one who finds a variant hiding. Um, and I really like how quickly he's able to adapt to working with the TVA because before he was kind of just like putting his foot down like no I don't trust you I don't believe you but then he just so easily like melds into their workflow I also like how they take breaks from being at the TVA and take trips to different places on the timeline um, and each time Loki gets more and more of Mobius's trust I love that the variant is female also because it creates so much more intrigue to the plot um, because it shows how different um, variants can be. They're not just exactly the same being, they can have a lot of different characteristics. Um, and they kind of hint to that, although we see a lot more of that in episode 5. I like how the variant is able to possess other people and modify their memories um, and her powers are so different from Loki's so I think that's pretty cool. It's also interesting how they like predict disasters into the future and they seem kind of plausible because a lot of them are climate related so that's pretty sad but they I think they're doing a good job predicting those. So with episode 3 um, we go to Lamentous 1 and every episode surprised me but I think this is the one that surprised me the most because it was just so completely different. I did not expect them to end up on some moon like in an apocalypse so um we've never really heard about lamentous one that i remember so that was definitely very new um again i appreciate loki and sylvie's differences um and this episode has like another kind of happy feeling but it's not quite as happy as the past episode episode two um i do like how sylvie and loki like start to become friends and I love that Loki comes out in this episode, that makes me so happy. And how he, you know, there was no hesitation when he meets this very of himself. He just like opens up. Of course, it does take a little bit of them fighting, but when they start opening up to each other, he just says it and like he hasn't come out before. So I love that. I just love the whole train scene with the singing and it's pretty funny. And just especially how Sylvie and Loki bond so much during that scene. Uh, the first time I watched this, I had, like, absolutely no idea what was going to happen. Um, when the rock hit the escape pod, I was like, well, I thought they were just stuck there, to be honest. I didn't really know what they were going to do with that. So, um, I think Marvel does a really good job of making things not be predictable. Of course, sometimes you are able to guess what's going to happen, but I just had absolutely no idea that they were going to be rescued by the TVA. I thought they would stay on Lamentous 1 until either it got destroyed or something else happened, so that was surprising to me, um, although that was not in this episode. I like how much magic there is in this episode because it's kind of sad that there is no magic at the TVA because I love seeing like Loki and Sylvie's magic. So episode 4, I appreciate that they show like Sylvie's background and thank god they saved Sylvie and Loki, like, if they just left them on Lamentis. But there was a little bit of hope at the end because they were starting to have their moment. So, um, the time loop scene shows, like, Loki's development versus what his old self did with Sif, and it's a great contrast. It also shows how little motivation Loki has left because he doesn't even fight Sif, he just kind of takes it. He, he just 
stands there and, and then he kneels down and stays there because you know before he definitely would have fought back or tried to find a way out of it but he kind of just accepts and he's like okay Mobius is going to let me out I'm just gonna stay here and take the punishment so I hate Loki and Mobius's relationship in this episode um, it's like Mobius is mad at Loki which he's allowed to be mad but I just I just love how great of friends they are in episode 2 and I wish that would continue a little more we do see that a little bit more in episode 5 but not nearly enough um, generally there's like a sad feeling throughout this whole episode that just keeps getting worse just more and more things build on each other and I really don't like how Renslayer uses Mobius and like stabs him in the back um, literally I think he was trustworthy enough and he thought they were friends and she kept him in the dark and then pruned him I think she definitely could have let him in on the secret without any bad effects I think he would have understood and maybe he might have tried to definitely learn more about the TVA but I don't know if he would have tried to take it down like he did once he was pruned so I don't know about that I, d I just don't like how she clearly stabs him in the back when they're friends. I cannot take the ending of this episode. First, Mobius is pruning, which is completely uncalled for. I had, I did not expect it whatsoever the first time I watched this. Um, the timekeepers being fake, which I mean, of course, I didn't really expect there to be a, so like three people in charge. That just didn't really make sense to me. But I thought there had to be something running it. So the fact that they're fake and we don't know who's running the TVA at that point, that is. Um, surprising and then Loki's pruning that was even worse and the few minutes between the end of the episode and the end credits I was just like laying there in bed it was like 2 a.m. I was just like why do I even watch the show anymore he's just gonna die again so at that point we didn't know they could come back from the void so that was definitely that was very rough I did not go to back to sleep after that. Um, I laid in bed with a migraine and thought about just what happened. So I just can't take the ending. But I'm so glad for the post credit scene because the week between episodes would have been terrible after Loki was pruned because we kind of just thought they were gone after they get pruned. So that that was that was rough. So on to episode 5. I love how many Loki variants there are um, and how they survived being pruned because that seems like such a Loki trait to have such like shared resilience. Um, and all of the differences between the variants make it so much more interesting. Um, I love the idea of there being like an alligator Loki. The fact that like we can accept it, you know, it's not even that surprising. <laughs> and President Loki. I love President Loki. He he's definitely one of my favorite variants, you know. He's up there with like Loki and Sylvie, and then President Loki, and then maybe like Alligator Loki, then Kid Loki, um, then Classic Loki, so there are so many of them. But President Loki is definitely one of my favorites. So President Loki getting his hand bitten off was a little out of pocket. Um that was a little like Bruh, because Marvel usually doesn't have a lot of like blood and guts or anything, and that was just just like just the teeniest bit gross. You know, I think for their PG-13 rating, they can't have a lot of like gore, so that was a little un-Marvel-like, but whatever, that's fine. Um, it is a little weak that having a temp pad can get you out of the void. I feel like it should be a little harder, um, but. I mean, I feel like people in the past probably have been pruned with Tempad, so why don't they just come back? That kind of doesn't make sense to me. Um, but Loki and Sylvie's dynamic in this episode is cute. I just wish they would have like hugged when they first saw each other when uh, Mobius brought Sylvie over and they ran into the Lokis. So I think, I don't know, they definitely should have hugged. They definitely wanted to, but they didn't. 
it just seems so right how classic Loki sacrifices himself to Elioth to create a distraction for Sylvie and Loki. It's kind of sad seeing Asgard um, because it's destroyed in this timeline um, when classic Loki like creates it with his magic. Um, it's just sad to see it and I know it is for um, Loki and Sylvie as well. I love the idea that Lokis are more powerful than they think because it kind of breaks down the walls that they put up um, of like power and glorious purpose. They always project that they are so great and they're the best, they're so powerful, but they don't actually know how powerful they are. So I find it interesting how their power is actually more than they think. Um, and especially because Loki's character development, he's starting to become a little bit less selfish and, you know, less of a narcissist in this show. So I like that, um, that he's like, whoa, if I kind of bring down my barriers, then I can realize, like, letting people in helps me become a better me. So episode six, um, I love the style of the marble and the gold in, like, the palace inside of Eliath. I, like, that doesn't have anything to do with, like, the plot, <laughs> but I just like the black marble with the gold in it. I think it looks really good. Um, I wonder if we'll find out who smashed the statue because when they first went into the palace there was like a statue on the ground so I'm wondering if that's gonna like come up later in the show I'm not sure also Miss Minute <laughs> she scared me so bad um, well in the show it wasn't that bad but on TikTok they've made it so much worse they have all of these jump scares and it's made me like genuinely afraid of Miss Minutes before I just thought she was a little weird but at this point, it's like, <laughs> bruh, it's pretty, pretty scary. So I'm kind of wondering how he who remains like relates to ideas of God because he who remains, when I first thought of it, I was like, so he's just God, but apparently he's like a person who had to organize the timelines because his variants on other, like in other universes were kind of making war so I'm just wondering how he was the most powerful and how his variants are going to affect us later so this episode kind of lacks some action to be honest but I do appreciate the Sylvie Loki fight scene um, I also like how we get to like take breaks and see glimpses of what's going on at the TVA during the fight um, the Sylvie and Loki kiss is it's cute. It's just a little weird that they're variants of the same being. I can't really get over that they're basically the same person. So, I don't know. It's just a little weird. I I haven't really formed an opinion on that because I like their dynamic, like, especially as friends. It's cute. But, like, them being together, I don't really know. I hate how Sylvie shoves Loki through the time door and then destroys the sacred timeline because he was trying to protect her by um, keeping the timeline together and they should have come to an agreement, um, but she did it out of anger towards the TVA. She was like resenting the TVA from making her be on the run for her whole life, but she's creating so many more problems than she is solving. And if she hadn't have been on the run for her whole life, if she had just been pruned by the TVA, she would never have met Loki, so that's one thing. Um, also, when Mobius and Hunter B-15 don't remember Loki, um, that made me have many questions. Like, did he go back to the TVA on a different timeline, like once the timeline branched? But I'm not really sure because Sylvie destroyed the timeline right after Loki went back to the TVA so also um, I was thinking like can you not remember people when they come back from the void like if your memory of them is erased once they're gone or once they try to come back so that's another question as well as will Loki remember Sylvie when she comes back if she's able to come back so I don't really know about that um, Final thoughts, I guess. Um, I love the show, and it was set up perfectly for another season, which I'm very grateful for. 
Um, Loki had so much character development and he's like a completely different person than he was at the beginning of the show and especially from Avengers. Um, it's kind of sad that we might never see Loki and Thor together again because Loki's kind of like with the TVA working on the timeline and Thor is back on, I don't even know where he is, he might be on New Asgard, he might be on like, he might be in New York, I don't know. But I guess we'll see in Thor Love and Thunder. Um, I do really like Mobius and Sylvie and their dynamics with Loki. I do again wish that I would see more Mobius and Loki together, but maybe we'll see that in season two. Um, they haven't like formally announced the season two, but I have heard talk of it, so we can fingers crossed. But they did set it up very well, so we can hope. I can't wait for the Doctor Strange movie with all of the new concepts introduced in the show. I think the movie's gonna be nuts, especially with the timeline just being completely messed up. Um, I think it's gonna be a lot of work for Doctor Strange, but I think it'll be a really great movie. I'm so glad that they brought Loki back because his death in Infinity War felt really, really final, if you remember that. Um, it's hard to watch him die over and over again, to be honest, but I'm really glad we're gonna get to see more of him again. Although, it is kind of sad to think that I know he's gonna be in um, Doctor Strange, but we might only ever see him in his own series now. Um, I was kind of like scrolling through the cast lists of the upcoming Marvel stuff and I don't think he was gonna be in Thor um, so it's gonna be interesting where we're gonna see Loki again um, in phase four so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed my review I kind of just like went on rambling for over 20 minutes I hope you enjoyed it I'm definitely a Marvel nerd but I'm not gonna apologize for it because I love it as you can see my new Marvel Comics poster up there <laughs> yeah I hope you enjoyed um, let me know what your opinions on all these are remember these are all just opinions so if you have a different opinion that is great so yeah make sure to follow me on all social media at Rosie Revolts if you really like Loki then you would really like my TikTok because at this point it's kind of like a Marvel fan page so you should follow my TikTok make sure to check out my Etsy shop also at Rosie Revolts and my book at GetOutdoorsBook.com and I'll see you guys later bye